So we're going to break down the nutrients so we can understand it a little better. Energy. This is the first limiting nutrient. This is what you try to achieve first before anything else. Without you reaching your basal energy, there will be no gain. So you'll just be here the whole time and you won't see any weight being achieved. You won't be producing any milk. So we need to achieve our energy first. Come everybody say that with me. We need to achieve our energy first. All right. Requirements vary depending on the stage which we talk about. A lamb will need a different amount of energy compared to an adult male. It's obvious, it's basic, which is we should know. And you can achieve this using medium and high quality forages. So no low quality forage can give the amount of energy where you need. You have to make sure so the diet is appropriate. As the total digestible nutrients increase, the rate of gain normally increases. And if you don't achieve this, you'll have what you call poor growth. You'll have low body condition score. You'll have a decreased fiber production and you have an inc increased disease susceptibility. The immune system gets weak. The body condition score is important because we can use this to basically analyze what we need and how we're going to feed the animal. Well, normally the score runs from one to five, but this one is from one to four. And what we're looking at is a basically a physical appraisal. You go and you look on the animal. You can use our body types for instance. Mr. Dean, stand up for me, please. Mm -hmm. All right, I don't want to disrespect myself, but <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious when looking at the body condition scores, there's a vast difference between me and him. Like, what score would he give me? Four. Really? Four. <laughs> um, Four. Five. Four. Five. <laughs> <laughs> What score will you give Mr. Dean? Four. So you're saying Mr. Dean's fat? No. No, Mr. Dean wouldn't be fat. But, I, but ideally, for your sheep and gold farm, you want to keep them between a 2.5 to a 3. And that would be ideal for most of your thing. But how is it that you can do the body condition score? You look at the amount of bone exposed. And you can feel. You can go to the back of the animal, to the rump and you feel how much flesh you actually feel in here. If you feel the bone, like me, touch clearly, you feel my ribs, that's a one. <laughs> Mr. D in that case, you might have to press much more to feel his ribs. <laughs> With all that muscle on you, he's lean. You'll be a tree. So Mr. D will be say, in that relatively good range. This is speculative. about. Fab reading. Fab reading, for everything. <laughs> I clearly need more food. <laughs> are clearly are not meeting my energy requirement. All right. Um, the effect of breed on energy requirement. We talked about breed earlier. It's an example. The native, the boar, and the dairy animal. And you observe that the native goat compared to the boar goat need about 10% more energy compared to the native animal. It can increase. I'm just giving you an average. For the dairy animal, it's about 30% more compared to the native animal. And you guys know why? Tell me why the dairy animal requires more energy. Milk production, so the body needs more energy. Let's go back to the presentation. We're talking now the effect of lactation energy. Which we, talk, we guys know already, so I don't need to go over this again. You guys know, a lactating animal really requires much more energy requirement than what's not known lactating. And you should know this, why you can use it in two ways. You don't want to, you don't want to have feed them the same. That's why you lose your money. Management. You really should say, boy, I'm going to increase energy for this set of animals compared to this one. That's how you save your money. So it's really down to management, you know. It's really down to management. Fiber, which are put together with energy. Because why? Most of your energy that you're going to gain will be coming from fiber sources. But what is important is because we're dealing with ruminants. A lot of people don't know this. That an adult ruminant needs about a greater than 50% of their diet of fiber. Sheeps will require more. A lot of people don't know this, I'm telling you. Fiber is, you need fiber for, for rumination. And if you don't provide adequate amount of fiber, you'll have wool or hair pulling, decreased milk production. And let me warn you, you might be in a place where they're saying, boy, we have pelleted hay. You cannot use pelleted hay as a solution to provide fiber. You cannot do it. You have to give them that raw fiber. But chop some grass and make it dry and give it to them. You're here. 
All right. Since you said she need more, what more percentage? About Same about percentage. five ten percent on an average compared to to goat. Goat be what? Over 50. 50. Say 50. Let us All say right. goats are 50, and if you look at a sheep, you call it 60, 60. or 55. Right. You need more fiber. Protein. Why I like small ruminants is that, well, most ruminants, is that for rumen bacteria to grow and function, you need a minimum of 7%, which is pretty low compared to some other animals, like your pig and the other, you need way more protein. You can use 7% and satisfy your animal. But I'm not saying you should only aim for 7%. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying minimum of 7%. In this case, protein quantity is more important than quality. The women can manufacture. The women can manufacture most what the animal needs. So you need to provide that animal with protein and fiber, and they will convert to whatever protein they need. So you don't need to give them, say, boy, I'm going to go out and make sure I get them fish meal and all them type of bossy, quality protein, A-grade quality protein. It's really the quantity that you provide to them. You can achieve this through grass hay or some legroom hay, which, you know, 6 to 12% protein, 28% protein, and you can use the non-protein nitrogen sources, like urea, fertilizer. You add that to them diet. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. So the requirements of digestible crude protein is 2.3 to 2.8 grams per kg for sheep and goat. And it may increase in the last of the pregnancy to 80 to 100 percent. So what I'm saying is that a pregnant animal now would require at least 23 grams per kg during that last trimester or during that breeding thing. Um, let us talk about this now. Rumen degradable protein and rumen undegradable protein. Anybody ever heard about this before? Anybody know what you call rumen, a smaller word for rumen undegradable protein? Bypass protein. <laughs> Bypass protein. <laughs> All right. So the rumen degradable protein. This is protein that is very solid. The rumen break it down. So the animal won't be able to utilize this protein like how it should. The rumen on the grill protein, what you call the bypass protein, slips through the rumen, but only to chew stomach, get digested and absorbed and can be utilized better. And we want a balance between these two, a 60 to 40 percent balance to achieve optimal production of rumen degradable and rumen undegradable protein. Anybody know any sources of rumen undegradable protein a way you can use to even render some feedstuff a bit less digestible? Anybody? They were looking in your feeds where you get from your feed company. Sometimes they use for a man there, I think called Termin X. Add it to the feed, very small quantity. I think it's about 0 0.001 parts per million in the feed. And this reduces the digestibility of the feed. So it allows for more bypass protein. Then you have some forages you can use as bypass protein sources. Like Lucina, which has some pharma tannins and alkalis that allow the, pr the protein to pass through the rumen and get absorbed later in the gut. So, I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Talk about minerals. Come on, I need you guys help with this one now. I want somebody to tell me what they know, which mineral, what, what, what mineral can contribute to. A female, tell me about iron. Any female, how iron important to your body? Blood. Blood. <laughs> All right. Calcium and phosphorus. <laughs> Easiest one. Um, selenium. That is it. Mr. Mackey actually did a research where I'm looking at conception rates and polyphysary using selenium inside AI treatment. So any guy in here who having problems, <laughs> selenium can help us. But let us look at where you can get your minerals them from. You have the salt block, which a lot of us use. But you guys should know that the salt block is just strictly salt. You might get cobalt, but it's strictly salt, which is sodium chloride. What is important to get all these other additional trace minerals is your trace mineral mix, or what you call your free choice minerals, that you can buy from your local farm store. So there's a difference. Um, it's available in other Caribbean islands. Really? The brown. The brown. 
Free the free choice mineral rocks. Free choice. So remember, in bags. In bags. Yeah. Nobody have it? No. I've got to market some to you guys then. Man. So remember, this is salt. This is not your trace mineral. Don't get, don't get them mixed up. Please, tap me here. Everybody think that boy, the salt block giving you all the minerals. Mm -mm. You need to get your trace mineral blocks. Vitamins. And the room normally synthesize vitamin B. But we have to provide what you call the fat soluble vitamins. We humans to take it. In high school or school, we learn it as ADEC. To remember it. What is the fat soluble? ADEC. A, D, E, and K. Um, K, you might not have to supplement in healthy animals. But the rest, you should try to supplement just to boost the body function. Just to make sure they're regulating everything right. 